In this video, we're going to take a second look at the pencil production problem. And so in previous videos, we went through the pencil production problem as a problem statement, which I have linked here and is hosted up on the GitHub repository. And we analyzed the problem statement and developed a mathematical model to represent it, which I've also shown here for convenience. And so then we need to go about solving this model to turn the optimal solution in this case our optimal solution was the quantity of two different types of pencils to produce x of e represented the lower end pencil the quantity of economy writer pencils to produce and x of d represented the quantity of deluxe writer pencils to produce and you can choose a number of different ways to solve this. Um, I've made a video where you could actually solve it using Microsoft Excel and use its default solver. But this video, we're obviously looking at a Jupyter Notebook here. And we're going to use a combination of Python, a Python package called Pyomo, and the GLPK or GNU Linear Programming Kit as the actual solver itself there. And so let's just dive right into it. So first off, again, I'm in a Jupyter Notebook there, uh, so you'll need to have that if you're following along. Also, you'll need to have the Python package Pyomo installed, and so I'll provide links to some of these items in the description of the video, but uh, Pyomo's homepage is right here. The installation is very straightforward. You just can pip install it into a Python installation or a virtual environment there, and then you should have access to Pyomo. A GLPK is a little bit different. Um, here's the GLPK uh, homepage. Um, you can download it, and I think on Windows all it is is basically downloading it, um, unzipping it, and then being able to reference the executable inside of what was that compressed folder there. If you have uh, further questions, you can obviously reach out to me and I can assist as needed. But on my system, I've already got Pyomo installed, I've already got GLPK installed, and so I am ready to go. And so a little bit of background, uh, Pyomo is basically a framework where you can uh, describe these problems uh, to a solver itself. So Pyomo is not a solver per se, uh, but again, it's just this framework that sits on top of the solver and allows you to uh, develop these mathematical models in a way that the solvers can't understand. And it really doesn't matter too much what solver you use for Pyomo. Um, if I execute this statement from the terminal inside of Jupyter Notebook, that's what the exclamation points can allow me to do. This should show a listing of all the different solvers uh, that Pyomo can interface with. And so you can see there is a fairly long list of solvers here uh, that it has the ability to interact with. And we are very interested in this one right here the GLPK LP slash MIP solver is what we'll be using today. But of course, you're not tied to that one specifically. Uh, some more commercial ones are like Cplex and uh, Groby there can also interface with this framework, uh, which is a nice thing there. You can basically learn one modeling language and then be able to tie it into multiple different frameworks or multiple different solvers, excuse me. So with that being said, uh, let's go ahead and start constructing our model. So just put in some markdown here. I'll say model solution development. All right, so now we need to start actually working inside of Pyomo to describe this mathematical model that I've written in markdown. And so we can start by just importing a couple parts of Pyomo. So you can say import Pyomo dot OPT SPO. Uh, this allows us to access the uh, solver factory so we can actually create an instance of the solver, if you will. And then we also insert import pyomo.environ SPE. Uh, this is the Pyomo environment, which allows us to have all the access to create a model, create variables, create objective functions, and constraints there. So at this point, the imports worked correctly. And the next thing will be to actually create a Pyomo model. And so 
we can just call it model. And there are two different types of models inside of Pyoma. There are concrete models and abstract models. Uh, this is going to be a very introductory video, so I'm not going to go diving into too much of the details of why we're doing certain things. And so just take it for now that we'll be creating a concrete model. And we'll go ahead and just give it a name of production, pencil production. And so the model is what we'll build everything on top of. So we'll tie the objective function to the model, we'll tie the variables to the model, we'll tie the uh, constraints to the model, and then we'll pass that model to the solver. The solver will then solve for the optimal solution, and then it will return the optimal solution values, for instance, back into the model's properties that reference the decision variables. So at this point we have a model, and now we need to tell the model about these decision variables, right? And so we'll just say model.x under econ is equal to pe.variable, uh, var for variable there. And then one of the things we have to tell the model is basically this part of our mathematical statement of the model, and that's these are non-negative real variables. And so we'll say the domain equals pe.nonnegative reals. And you can see it accepted nicely. And so that gets us a variable to represent the quantity of economy writer pencils. And now we will do a similar thing for the deluxe writer pencils. And this is one of the things that I'll be coming up here and hitting a run all there. If I'm Iterating a cell more than once, uh, just the way the Jupyter Notebook's working, it's almost as if I'm trying to define, for instance, that case, the x underscore econ variable twice, and that's why you saw that little warning message down there. We don't really want that, so um, if I start seeing those warning messages, I'll come up and I'll say, run all cells again, which goes from the top of the notebook and all the way down, and we we'll, should remove those warning messages. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have a mathematical, or we have a Pyoma model, and we have described the two decision variables to it. Next step would be to create the objective function. And so the way I'm going to do this is defining a relationship here that I'll just call objective expression. And it was 0.41 times, now I'm going to reference the models, x underscore econ, remember that's the decision variable, and also say plus 0.84 times model the x underscore del to reference that decision variable. So at this point, if I look at that and just say like the type of objective expression, notice this doesn't say anything about an objective expression, right? It's just saying it's a Pyomo and some sort of sum expression here. But we need to tie that into the objective. And so we will have on our model again, I'll just say it's OBJ is my objective. And of the type, I'm going to say it's a PE dot objective, and inside of the objective we need to basically tell it two things, right? We need to tell it whether we're maximizing and minimizing, so that'll be the sense, and so I'll just say PE dot maximize, and then we also need to tell it the expression that we're trying to maximize in this case, which is with the keyword argument EXPR, or short for expression, and I'll just set that equal to the objective expression. And it's shipped in there, and it is accepting it successfully. So, so far so good. And the next step is these constraints. And if you remember from the reference here, uh, the first set of constraints had to do with the amount of capacity and labor we had for each of these departments, pre-processing, curing, shaping, and assembly. And so we, let's go ahead and start with some of these. And then at some point, I'll just copy and paste the rest of them in here because it's going to become very repetitive. And I don't want to make a very long video where all I'm doing is showing me typing the same things over and over. So I will say model.preprocessing. And this will represent the preprocessing labor constraint. And so it's very similar. We've said pe.var for variable, pe.objective for the objective function. We'll say pe.constraint for this constraint. And I'm going to tell Pyomo the constraint using the expression keyword. And if I used this 
version of the model the way it's written up in Markdown, I would write 5.56 times 10 to the negative fourth XB uh, plus 5.56 times 10 to the negative fourth XD is less than or equal to 12. I'm going to make this a little bit more accurate than what I would do from here uh, because instead of 5.56 times 10 to the negative fourth, I'm going to remember that that is actually 2 divided by 3600 to convert from this time in seconds to time in hours. And I'll put that fraction in here. So 2 divided by 3600 times model.x underscore econ, uh, plus again 2 divided by 3600 times model.x underscore del. So that essentially that I've written here, this is the left hand side of the inequality, and then we'll say it's less than or equal to 12 for the right hand side of the inequality. And let's do one more just to make sure we're going correctly. The curing is 3.5 for both of them. 3.5 seconds consumed for every unit produced. So I'll say model.curing is PE.constraint. Expression is equal to, we said that was 3.5, I believe. Yes. Divided by 3600 times model.x underscore econ. 3.5 divided by 3600 times model.x underscore del. It's less than or equal to 8.25. Okay, so it accepted those and those are in good shape. And then of course I would do the same thing for the remaining two departments, right? We still have the shaping and the assembly departments. Uh, so if you'll allow me just to take it from some of my other notes copy and paste here this is the error that I was talking about I've got two warnings here because it thinks I'm trying to declare preprocessing curing again I'll run all again and the error goes away so at this point we have described all of the departmental labor constraints to the model itself and really you would do the exact same thing now for all of the materials or all the parts that I would be consuming as I make these pencil assemblies. And so we'd follow the exact same logic and if you'll let me I will just copy and paste those in to save on some time. It should look something about like this where again I have instead of putting the decimal representations I have went ahead and put in the actual fractions here as I converted from ounces to pounds on a few of these. And if you need to, you can obviously do that computation and confirm that that's what's up here as well. And so at this point, I should have all the constraints in the model itself. Uh, the four that had to do with the different departments. And then the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it appears, uh, constraints with the parts itself. And so if you look at our model up here and look at my bit of Python code here. At this point I have told PyOMO everything there is to know about this model. So that part is done and now it's just a matter of actually solving the model itself. So to solve it first we need to create a solver. So I'll use now PO instead of PE. The PO.solver factory and I will tell it that I want to use GLPK. And so that is ran successfully. And then we'll just say results is equal solver.solve and we will pass it the model that we've been working on. And you can stop right here and that should be enough to solve it. But what I like to do is I will put comma T equals true here because that will allow it to print out this text as it goes through and solves the model itself. Basically, uh, when it's going through, it's actually printing to the terminal, and by t equals true, we're tapping into that and getting it to show in the Jupyter Notebook here. So most of the stuff we don't have to worry about too much. Uh, you can see it does reference the GLP KLP slash MIP solver. That's great. Um, it does some stuff where it's pre-processing the model. And one of the things we're interested in is right here where it says optimal LPA solution found. That is great. That's exactly what we wanted to find. And then we're writing some stuff out to the temp directory. That's okay. 
Um, that's nice at this point. You could say, well, yeah, that's great. It solved the model, but how do I actually know what the model looks like? Well, one way you can do that is just by saying model.display. And if I scroll down here, this is just showing, showing you everything there is to know about the kind of solution of the model at, at a high level, if you will. So first off, I can say that there's a variables, and there's my x underscore econ variable, and here is the optimal solution value for that variable. Same thing for the deluxe variable. In this case, it would be saying you need to make approximately 1,721 economy writer pencils and 5,102 deluxe writer pencils there, which should be very similar to what we saw in uh, the other solution with the MS Excel solver. This resulted in an objective function of $4,992 um, in terms of a profit contribution there. Uh, this value is a little bit lower if you go to compare it to the Excel uh, solution problem just because the Excel solution has more exact values for these unit profit contributions up here in our objective function uh, than what we actually used in our model itself. But everything looks good. We've been able to uh, solve for the optimal solution for this problem. Um, a couple other things just to, to make sure you're aware of. Um, you can use model.display to get a readout of what the results are. Uh, if you want a little bit more information, you can also do model.preprint, P-P-R-I-N-T. It gives you similar information, but in a little bit different form. And then also you say, well, I'm not interested in all this information. Maybe you want to store a value in a Python variable. Um, you could say something like, well, the quantity of economy pencils is pe dot value model dot x underscore econ and I could say print now the quantity of model pencils and say quantity economy pencils here. There we go. Maybe form of that a little bit better. And notice here what I've done is I've used pe.value, that's a, a method on the Pyome environment, to actually interrogate the value of this decision variable. So you can use that in more of a Python scripting way to actually extract just the value out of the, in this case, the optimal value of the decision variable and use that in other places in your code. Okay, so we've made it to what will be the end of this video. Um, hopefully it's helped, you found it helpful. Uh, again, this video is meant to be a really high level um, overview of how to use Pyomo plus GLPK uh, to solve a fairly simple mathematical linear programming problem. Uh, hopefully if you're fairly new to Python and coding, you're not too scared away of it. I mean, if you take a look at the amount of code, all we have are this handful of statements here um, that gets a little bit wordy just because I've got a number of constraints there, but total, we're talking very minimal lines of code here. There's probably um, 20, 30 lines of code maybe uh, that I've written total for this entire um, notebook. So hopefully that doesn't seem too intimidating uh, when we start talking about code in Python. Sometimes people get um, a little scared of it at the very beginning. Uh, but hopefully you find this uh, kind of warm and um, cuddly, so to speak, um, and you're ready to try it on your own. And again, in the future I'll make uh, more advanced videos where we'll talk about uh, different ways to use Pyomo. Uh, you can see constraints got a little bit wordy here. There are ways to create what's called a constraint list, for instance, uh, to help with that. And again, I will show that in the future.